ending our uh, webinar today. And uh, what we'd like to talk about today is um, different uh, applications that we can perform uh, for the breweries uh, to measure yeast concentration and viability, and also new applications such as vit uh, yeast vitality during the fermentation. So the title of our webinar is Quick and Easy Way to Measure Yeast Concentration and Viability in Fermentation. So the presentation outline consists of a short introduction to us, Nexon Bioscience, an introduction to the salometer industry, and we're going to go through some of the current yeast counting and viability methods, which I believe most of you are currently using. Um, and we'll talk about what is that difference to the salometer image cytometry method. And we're going to review four yeast counting applications. First, it will be a total concentration by bright field. We're going to look at yeast viability with one fluorescence, yeast viability with two fluorescences, and also yeast vitality method. Now we're going to do a quick salometer X2 training uh, to show you uh, what the system is consists of and what the software looks like. Then we're going to conclude with which salometer is the right one for us, for you, and also the uh, and finally the summary of the presentation. So quickly uh, about next on bioscience, we are located in Boston, about uh, 30 minutes north, and we're founded in 2003. And our company has been focused on uh, developing uh, and innovating in systems to do automated cell enumeration and analysis using image-based technology. So this, this technology can help reduce the error and increase the assay accuracy. And one of the most important part about Nexlum is we provide very uh, excellent uh, customer service and application support. And we work very close with uh, our customers on developing new uh, new applications or just current support on uh, their current assays. So, salometer image cytometry again is an image-based system. Uh, basically, it's like an automated microscope, and what we have been use, using the system to uh, monitor product quality yeast research and strain development, specifically for the brewing industry. Um, the image analysis of the yeast using salometer has been performed in not just breweries, but wineries, also uh, yeast production facilities, and, all, and, and, and as well as biofuel. Um, currently, there are numerous breweries that's using salometer methods for yeast concentration and viability, and as well as vitality. Uh, breweries such as Avery, Allagash, uh, Dogfish Head, Cigar City, and Stone Brewing are some of our uh, references, and we have many more uh, that's currently using this method. So in this presentation, we want to demonstrate the capability and versatility of the salometer image cytometer. So as we know, each concentration and viability are very important for the brewing industry, um, it, it also wine and baking. So these parameters can be measured and monitored uh, throughout the entire fermentation process. So by looking at these parameters, we can optimize uh, the fermentation process to improve uh, product quality, the beverage quality, and also consistency of the product. So this image is probably very familiar with many of you that's currently counting with microscope. So it's a manual counting method. It's a traditional method that's uh, about two centuries of history. Um, and what we use currently is the methylene blue for viability uh, to measure the concentration and viability of the yeast for each sample. However, this method is prone to user variation. So it can be very different from user to user. And uh, it's sometimes if you count many cells, it could be very time consuming. Over the years, probably in the last 20 years, uh, there has been very many development in uh, fluorescent, uh, fluorescent dyes for yeast to study viability or other parameters. So by using fluorescent microscopy, uh, it has the ability to study fluorescence and using image-based observation to uh, qualify the yeast 
However, it still, this method still lacks the automation and lacks the quantitative analysis. So there are also something called flow cytometry or particle counter, which provides automation uh, for each sample. It can definitely improve the statistical analysis of the, um, um, each sample because it can count many, many cells, hundreds and thousands of cells by flowing through this uh, system. However, this, these type of systems can have considerable maintenance uh, and also it could be, it could clog to, to clumps of cells. Um, there's also cross-contamination issues and one big thing is it, the standard method doesn't have image capability. So sometimes it's hard to determine if the data collected is actually accurate. Um, so there's an uncertainty to the result. In next round, we we have two systems that's currently been used for the uh, brewing industry, which is the Salomer X1 and Salomer X2 yeast analyzer. So on the left, you can see a, a table with a, a comparison between the two systems. Basically, Salomer X1 has one fluorescence channel for uh, viability and concentration, and X2 has two fluorescence channels uh, for viability and vitality and concentration. Um, and uh, you can see the system on the bottom right side. And there's some example yeast strain uh, list that we have compiled. So this is not all of them. And we have been trying to uh, collect information from uh, our customers to show the uh, um, capability of the salometer in counting all their samples. So what is the advantage of using a salometer versus the traditional method? Uh, of course, it, because it's an automated system, it, it can be less than uh, 60 seconds per sample. It has very simple uh, sample preparation steps. Improves the counting uh, consistency with uh, many built-in assay parameters, and these parameters can be locked to uh, so so it can improve the consistency uh, of the count. Um, we have dedicated on-site or online support for any troubleshooting or new application development, and well, we have continue to add new yeast applications such as vitality and other type of um, yeast strengths that, uh, to the list. So standard yeast fermentation process, generally uh, for counting yeast, we want to obtain the yeast sample prior or during fermentation. And most of the time, it's very difficult for breweries to measure during fermentation because it takes so much time. Uh, most of the breweries that we need we count, only count the yeast uh, prior to fermentation, basically during the yeast propagation uh, period. And after that, maybe once in a while to measure some samples. Um, so the next step usually after collecting the samples, we would dilute the yeast sample 1 to 10 uh, to 1 to 50 and stain with uh, methylene blue. Then we count the stain, the yeast sample with the hemocytometer with the microscope. And this generally is close to 15 or greater than 15 minutes per sample. So for the salometer method, there's no difference in collecting the yeast. Basically, you would collect sample as you would um, normally uh, from the fermentation tank. And you would dilute the yeast uh, less, probably you know, 1 to 1 or even 1 to 5 and staying with PI because since this is, again, the automated system, it can count much more yeast cells and much faster. And once we count the stained yeast with a salometer, it usually generally takes less than two minutes per sample, including preparation. So how do we do an image cytometric procedure? Okay. First, if we collect a sample, we can stain with the propylene iodide. And uh, we'll pipette 20 microliters into a counting chamber, insert the chamber into the system, and what we can do is select uh, specific assays for your sample. Then the system will take uh, several images for bright field and fluorescence to analyze. And finally, it will give you a cell count viability automatically. So. 
A very important thing for image-based cytometry is the ability to recognize patterns. So the software is designed specifically to have pattern recognition that can detect different morphology of the yeast cells. So the first one is very simple. It's single-celled yeast. Um, it's one by one, very easy to count in the image. And what we can do is enumerate all these single-celled uh, particles, in this regard, debris or clumps, by sizing parameters. So, for example, uh, these clumps, we can, we can decluster them, or we can count as one clump, and we can disregard uh, small cells, such as these particles right here. Okay? And second example is declustering budding cells. So the image analysis can allow us to actually decluster these into two, two particles. So you can set the algorithm to either count this as one or two. And finally, this is a, a, a very high level uh, special algorithm that what we can do is the method is to be able to uh, enumerate chain forming single yeast. So many of the yeast during propagation, they may form chains like such as this. And what we can do is actually decluster them into a single particle so we can get more accurate cell counting. So um, here are some of the uh, consistency testing that we have done. So uh, on the left side, you can see linearity for measuring yeast concentration. We can go from uh, 5 times 10 to the fifth cells per mil all the way up to 5 times 10 to the seventh cells per mil. It has very high R square value. And uh, on the bottom left, we have tested uh, consistency over 24 samples. And for here, you can see uh, different type of yeast show uh, CVs generally less than 10%. Uh, and by just repeating, uh, measuring the same sample, we have CV less than 2%. Um, so now what we want to get into is looking at viability uh, measurement using fluorescent staining method, which uses a nucleic acid membrane integrity detection. So what this type of stain does is it, it binds strongly to the DNA and fluoresce. So, and these type of stains are impermeable to live cells with intact membranes. So it readily passes through membrane compromised dead cells. So what we use is a stain called propylene iodide or PI. In a bright field, you can see the cell pointing uh, with, with a very nice new, uh, membrane. And in the fluorescence channel, you don't see any fluorescence, which means it's live. It has intact membrane. So on the right side, you can see the uh, cell membrane looks very different. The morphology has changed. Um, membrane is probably compromised, so it shows very bright uh, fluorescence in the PI fluorescence channel, so which means it's dead. So by measuring uh, viability using propylene that we can collect or acquire bright field images first and also fluorescent images. So you can see some of the cells are fluorescing in red, which is stained by PI. So in the bright field image, all of the cells will be counted. Uh, and in the fluorescence, all of the fluorescent positive cells are counted. So by using this, we can generate a viability uh, measurement. So here's an example of the dynamic range of viability measurement using PI. So what we did was we heat killed uh, the yeast and mix them with fresh cells at different percentages. And we can see the comparison of uh, viability versus the percent of the mixture, which has very high correlation at, uh, with a 0.99 R-square value. Next, we want to talk about yeast viability using dual staining measure measurement. So for previously, when we just used the perfume iodide, it's Basically, for uh, brewery samples, that's uh, very clean. There's no other debris that's in there. The reason why we need to use dual staining uh, using acridine orange and propylene iodide is when the sample contains other debris. Um, so this debris can be extra material that's added to the fermentation that will maybe generate different flavors or 
uh, aroma. And so that these debris can cause a problem when it's counting in the brightium. So when we use the dual fluorescence, we'll, we're both counting in the fluorescence channel so we can remove the, uh, the debris from the bright field counting. So activated orange can penetrate both membrane intact and compromise uh, live and dead cells. PI, again, penetrates only membrane compromised dead cells. Due to the AOPI interaction in the dead cells, AO will only fluoresce in the live cell while PI will fluoresce in the dead cell. So here's an example of uh, yeast staining with AOPI showing a bunch of debris that's in the sample. And we can see a very bright light yeast staining and bright dead cells, uh, dead yeast staining, while the debris are uh, uh, at minimum fluorescence. So we can count them very easily. So this sample was actually from an ethanol fermentation plant. Uh, using core mesh, so it's actually very messy. So early in the fermentation, uh, we show a viability at close to 90 percent, and over time, it, when the ethanol increases, the cells begin to die, and the viability drops to below 30 percent. And it is very consistent with our manual counting, this uh, methylene blue. So finally, what we want to look at is measuring metabolic activity using uh, CFDA AM. This is a non-fluorescent stain that readily passes through cell membrane into the cytoplasm. And what it does is when the stain is inside the cell, it will hydrolyze with esterase and forms a fluorescent molecule that's retained by the live cell. The membrane compromised dead cells are not able to form these fluorescent molecules or, and, um, or allow these molecules to dissipate. So in this example, we can see the uh, dead cells with a membrane structure that looks very bad. It does not show the CFDA AM fluorescence. While the live cell is fluorescing very strongly in the fluorescence channel. So this method is looking at the metabolic activity or the vitality of the yeast during fermentation. So let's look at the, these two parameters. So what we want to look at is measure the percent of live cells in the sample. And we can determine the amount of viable cells used for fermentation and improve the consistency by utilizing consistent amount of viable cells, which is the number one step. And we can use this by using propylene iodide or acronym orange and propylene iodide staining method. For vitality, we want to measure the percent of cells that's able to perform enzymatic reaction. And the metabolically active uh, cells that we need to determine are fermenting during the production. However, the vitality and viability may not correlate uh, due to the fact that the cell may be may have a very nice intact membrane, but uh, they might not be enzymatically active during production. So we use the carboxyfluorescein diacetate AM uh, fluorescent enzymatic stain for this measurement. So we set out to run an experimental protocol to show the comparison. So we have a, a yeast plate that is streaked out of overnight and cultured. And the next day, we put in 800 microliters into 20 mils of uh, media. And we allow this to grow. And we collect samples at 5, 10, 25, and 30 hour time point. And all those samples are resuspended in a, a buffer saline solution that's stained with AOPI or CFDA. So for AOPI viability, we can see that most of the cells are green from 5 to 30 hours, and which means they're highly viable. And we calculate the number of AOPI positive cells to determine the viability. However, for CFDA AM, at 5 hours, it has a 30 percent of vital cells that's highly fluorescent. At 10 hours, it starts to decrease. 25 hours, it decreased more. And at 30 hours, it went down to 3.65%. So which means that uh, over the 30-hour period, the yeast probably have used up uh, the nutrients that's in the media and starts to go dormant. They're not uh, metabolically active anymore. 
So now what we want to do is show you a quick overview on the stoometer X2. Uh, so let's talk about a brief introduction for X2 technology. So it is a fixed dual fluorescent channel system. It's suitable for yeast concentration, viability, and vitality uh, measurements. So there's a, uh, we do have a kit for the PI viability, also for ALPI, as well as a new kit that is, was released uh, last week for the yeast vitality measurement. So the two fixed fluorescent optics uh, modules, or FOMs, are shown here. One is called a green channel. The other one is a red channel, where we can measure uh, different fluorophores and nucleic acid stains. So let's look at the uh, Solomon X2 software. When you start off the software, the panel, will, the window will show up looking like this. And on the left side, there's a setup for different assays. You can set up different cell types. So if you are running different type of yeast strings, uh, you can have one for each, or you can have one with diff for different time points during the fermentation. So the next one is you can put in sample IDs. You can, uh, and also dilution factors, so you can always get the accurate counting without uh, having to do it in an Excel file. And there's some control panels here. You can preview bright images, preview fluorescent images. After counting, you can always review the images that's captured. Uh, you can look at the combined or counted image. Uh, and also, you can see the uh, results button on the top. On for one, you can see the uh, this is the result page that it pops up. Number two shows the a sample calculator that allows you to uh, dilute the sample according to a calculation. And number three is a cell size chart if cell size is an uh, important parameter for for you. And the bottom, you can see the count and the recount button. For any um, images that you save, you can always recount. So it's the best to uh, save those images so we can always go back and, uh, and reanalyze the images if there's any questions in the future. So this is a result screen. This is an example of the yeast ALPI viability. So you can see the name and the cell type on the top and the date that's generated, sample ID and the dilution factor. You can see the cell count, concentration, and the mean diameter, and finally the viability. You can also export this to Excel or text file, and you can export all of the images together. So now I want to show you the uh, protocol for the AOPI, which is basically mixing the yeast with the dilution buffer, and then mix one-to-one -one with the uh, AOPI staining solution. Pipette 20 microliters into the disposable counting chamber. Insert a slide and select the assay from the drop-down menu, click on count, acquire images, and view the results. So now I want to do a quick demonstration of the assay using the Thermometer X2 software. So in this case, we're going to use uh, saved images. So on the left side, you can see all the different uh, assays that we have uh, as the default. So we're going to just go to East AOPI viability. And we're going to select uh, the assays. Uh, where is that one? There you go. So basically, it, counts, it just counted a total of 2,000 cells. Uh, it has all the assays shown here, concentration and cell size. It shows about 98% viability. So here, you can see the different images. You can go see the bright field. In the fluorescent, you can see the AO is very bright. And you can see what's counted. You see some of these small particles that's not counted because we gated out the small cells. It could be the, um, could be the uh, cell size that we set up. And we can also see combined images. In the uh, PI channel, you can see 
some of the clumps are not counted because it's too big. You can see the bright dead cells shown here. And I do want to show one more example, which is the uh, small chain yeast. So this is one of the uh, uh, hard part for image cytometry to do, which is counting small chains, counting small chains. So we actually have a, a new algorithm that has been developed to count these in the method. So you can see if we zoom in, it's very clear that a lot of these chain forming yeast, we can actually decluster them into individual cells. So this can provide very accurate counting for yeast propagate during the yeast propagation step. Okay. All right. Let me go back to the presentation. So here are some publications that we have done for looking at the concentration and by, uh, measurement, liability measurement. We also have customers that have done strain development, shown here, and also monitoring production quality using the solometer. So at this point, I want to talk about which solometer is right for you, and also what is the, how to best use solometer in your brewery. So for Solomon X1, if you have a standard uh, brewing process for total cell and viability, have very clean yeast sample, you can just use Brightfield and PI to measure your uh, concentration and viability. If you want to use for breweries that does uh, standard and specialty brewery uh, process, so you have messy yeast samples, you can use the dual fluorescence AOPI concentration and viability. And for this system, you can also use uh, vitality reading with the CFBA AM. <coughs> so for all the breweries, what is the best thing to do with automated cell counting? Uh, the most important thing is to understand how the yeast behaves and yeast characteristics during the fermentation. Because you will have an automated cell counter, you have the ability to measure concentration and viability throughout the entire fermentation process for each of your products. And by performing this step, you have the ability to monitor and find a baseline of how yeast viability or and or vitality should change over time. And this allows you to establish the baseline so that if there's something wrong with the product, you can always go back or or identify the problem before it even exists. I mean, before it goes down the pipeline, uh, because you can, you can, you already have the previous data showing at this stage the viability should be this, but it's showing 50 percent. Something that this is exaggerating, but you can see it. You can basically follow a trend throughout your entire process. And with the software, you can set up uh, for each of the product that you have and measure them. And again. Uh, we have a very good support team at Nexlum, and we can help you set up these parameters uh, to, to monitor. And what we're currently doing is uh, we have a collaboration with uh, Avery Brewery uh, on a publication uh, that talks about measuring the yeast viability and vitality throughout the entire fermentation process to understand um, the, the baseline of the, of the product. So in summary, telometer can be used for rapid viability and concentration measurement uh, of yeast for most breweries and wineries. Uh, repeated experimentation have shown very consistent and reliable results for uh, both of these measurements. And in addition, by developing new fluorescent analysis method for uh, yeast vitality, that's another parameter that as breweries we can check uh, during the production to understand more about how the product is being made. Thank you very much for your attention today. Um, I will pass this back to Sarah. Thank you, Leo. That was a fantastic presentation. Uh, we will have time now for our questions and answers. So we will uh, go through that now. We do have a couple uh, here asked that came up through the presentation. Um, 
Also, on Leo's screen, um, you had you saw his email address. So, if you have any specific questions that you um, maybe won't get answered today, you can please reach out to Leo. Uh, he's more than happy to help. He's been instrumental in working to develop uh, all of these new technologies and applications uh, with the brewing community. Uh, I bet many of you have met him at the various conferences and, and events as well. Um, so with that, um, we do have a question here uh, from Christian, and it says, can I use the thermometer to detect unwanted yeast strands or detect other forms of contamination? That's a very good question. Uh, basically, by using thermometer, we're analyzing the images that's captured. Um, by just unwanted yeast strands, um, that's probably, you're probably trying to dis, uh, distinguish between wild type yeast and the yeast that you're using to, uh, to use for uh, production. Um, if the two cell types are very different in cell size, that could be a way to gate out the unwanted yeast strain. Uh, I think usually uh, wild yeast types are small, this smaller, so we may be able to do it like that. But if they look mostly the same, then it will be very difficult to separate them out. Um, other types of contamination could be bacteria, um, which is uh, is very difficult in an image cytometry world because they're very small. So currently, the thermometer does not detect uh, contamination uh, as such as bacteria. Um, so that will probably still require streaking out uh, or plating the uh, the sample as well. Thank you for the question. All right. Thank you, Christian, for your question. We have a couple hands raised. Um, because we do have some people on mute, it'd be easier if you can type any questions into the question bar. Um, if you want to go ahead and do that. So another question is, um, how do I use the thermometer to actually measure um, my sample during the ferment entire fermentation? So that's a very good question. So basically what we want to do is uh, establish different assay parameters, because the yeast can actually change over time during fermentation. For example, uh, during yeast propagation, many of the yeast types could form the chain chain yeast, as I've shown uh, earlier. And so that requires another algorithm or another assay to run. So what we need to do is understand more on how your yeast behaves during the entire fermentation process. Then if they're mostly the same throughout the entire thing, then we can just set up a default uh, assay type that can run the entire process and get accurate concentration and viability counts. Um, if they behave differently, for example, during propagation, maybe they form e uh, chains, then we will set up one, uh, one set, one assay parameter for counting that particular time frame. And then after the yeast is pitched or, um, or knocked out, then at that time we would have another set that would go through the entire uh, rest of the fermentation. And Perhaps the yeast may uh, behave differently at the end of the fermentation after they flocculate, uh, because uh, their morphology may change, their membrane integrity may change. So all those can be a factor. The most, uh, the best thing to do is uh, look at them during using the thermometer to look at all the yeast uh, throughout the fermentation, and then come back to us, and we can help you uh, set up different parameters to count them. Great. Uh, we did get a couple more questions in. Um, we have one that is asking, what is a dilution factor? Can you explain the reference to a high concentrated yeast, and do you account for the PI in the dilution factor? Um, that's a very good question. So uh, the dilution factor is used when you collect uh, the sample, the yeast sample from the fermentation tank. So after you collect it, uh, 
depending on the concentration or depending on the product, the yeast concentration may be very high. So that will never be able to count in a regular hemostatometer because the concentration is too high. So usually people do a dilution. So maybe one to ten. So basically, for example, one mil uh, one milliliter of the yeast and then nine milliliter of a water or buffer saline. So that's a one to ten dilution. Then after that, you would uh, maybe drop some methylene blue drops into the solution to stain the cells. It's the same thing for solometer where let's say you do a 1 to 10 dilution and when you mix 1 to 1 with the propinium iodide or the PI then you will account for that dilution. So the total will be 20 in this case. However, uh, for solometer, remember it is still a autom an automated system. So uh, we can always dilute less which means uh, we can have a more accurate uh, uh, count and statistical analysis because we count more cells. Um, so let's say if we do a one to five dilution from the fermentation tank and then a one to one with PI, then that the total dilution factor will be uh, 10 times. By multiplying the results by that number, which is already uh, already performed in the software itself when the result page pops up, that concentration is related back to the uh, concentration of the yeast currently in the fermentation tank. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, we have... Yeah, we have another one here. It says, how do you compare the accuracy of the solometer to the abermeter ever? So, that's a very good question. Uh, it's, the first thing is we need to understand is the solometer and the obermeter are two different type of instruments, two different technologies. The solometer is an image-based uh, system that basically is automating what you do under uh, a microscope. It's automating what you would count under a microscope to letting a computer count. The obermeter is a uh, capacitance uh, impedance measurement. So it's an inline system um, that that people can use in line with the with the uh, fermentation uh, systems, and um, I I think the best way to compare the accuracy between the two types of system, uh, I think the best way is to look at uh, different samples going in by by collecting a lot of data and then to, uh, to observe the trend to see if it has similar trends because they do measure different parameters, uh, characteristics from the cell. So for solometer, we're looking at actual numbers while the, uh, the, the impedance measurement we're looking at, the albumin we're looking at impedance and capacitance. Uh, but the best way to come to really validate the solometer is to use the hemostometer because that is the golden standard of the um, yeast, count, yeast uh, analysis world. All right. Um, we have another question. We've got some great questions, so thank you all. And we are going to get to all of them. Uh, the next question is, I've had issues using the optimized kit for breweries. I seem to get better results using the included yeast buffer with full strength AOPI. And is there any reason not to do this? I've tried increasing the exposure times with diluted AOPI, but it never counts all of the PI cells. So Scott, thank you for this. I, I'm going to judge here that you probably are currently using solometer. I'm sure we all have some feedback on this. Hi, Scott. Thank you very much for this question. Um, I'll try to answer your uh, your question, but I do want to follow up with you and see if we can help you uh, improve the assay. Uh, the, the Definitely we need to use the uh, buffer. The, uh, the yeast dilution buffer is developed to um, allow the uh, stain to enter the yeast more readily, so to stain them more uh, more properly. And we definitely need to use the full strength that was uh, developed so that it can get uh, uh, a good fluorescent, uh, fluorescent signal uh, at the uh, recommended exposure times. But if you're seeing uh, lower fluorescence on the PI, uh, I would, we would definitely need to look at some images to determine if you need a higher concentration. Uh, we do, we actually 
do have a um, uh, unreleased sample kit that has different AOPI concentration that we use for. Um, it's actually used for um, biofuel uh, industries where their their samples are extremely messy, has a lot of debris. So we have actually have different kits, uh, different concentration for them. So if we if we can work with you and look at some images, then we can determine if it's needed. Or maybe we just need to look at the counting parameter to see if it's counting properly. Okay. Our next question says, what properties of the enzymes are measured during the vitality stain? So the, the reaction is the uh, hydrolysis with the esterase. Um, in the yeast. So the, right now the vitality stain have been uh, working very well for lager and AOE. So if your breweries are, um, I think most of the breweries are, breweries are making lager and ale beer. Uh, these yeasts work very well with the vitality stain. Uh, it has, uh, these yeasts have high esterase uh, enzymes that can cleave the fluorescent molecules um, during the metabolic reaction and to form this fluorescence. Uh, we have tried uh, champagne yeast uh, such for like special beer. Uh, that we we didn't see a good signal. Uh, and there's one more strain. Uh, one more strain we haven't tried is the uh, betamyces for another uh, uh, specialty beer. So that's something that we're going to add to our list uh, once we uh, do more uh, development on that. Okay. Uh, our next question says, is it possible to measure glycogen content of the yeast as a measure of vitality using the X1 and X2? The uh, glycogen content, which is uh, uh, using acroflavin, uh, it is possible uh, for X2, uh, the salomer X2. Uh, it's basically using a stain called acroflavin that has many uh, uh, preparation procedure. We actually use a publication from the Institute of Brewing, and uh, uh, followed the protocol to try it out, try it in, in the uh, solometer, and we published an article on that. Um, if your lab is set up to do advanced level of, of biological research, then it would be, it would definitely be doable for the solometer X2 because the acroflavin is a green fluorescence color. Um, but if you there's but if you don't have, you know, centrifuge or uh, uh, other, you know, calibrated pipettes, then they'll be a little bit harder uh, because it actually requires a lot of preparation step to fix the cells with ethanol to uh, spin to spin out the uh, media, resuspending other media. Uh, but if you're def if you're interested, please contact me. And uh, what, we, what I can do is I can work with you on the protocol, and we can uh, um, do some testing with uh, your sample. But, it, it, but glycogen is, in several publications, it has been related to vitality of the um, of the yeast. Um, but definitely, the uh, right now the most robust and easy method is using the vitality thing. Okay. Um, Bill, I also sent you a response to that privately, including the uh, email address. So if you do have advanced questions, you can get in touch with him. Uh, our next question is from Jason, and he says, can I use the salometer T4 for the AOPI counting method? So the um, salometer T4 is actually just a bright field counter, and uh, so it has no fluorescence, so we'll not be able to uh, do, do the AOPI counting. We we'll definitely need to have used a um, solometer X2. Um, the solometer T4 will also be very hard to count yeast itself because uh, T4 has a 4x magnification, so it's for larger cells such as uh, cancer cells or stem cells or other mammalian cells. For yeast, most of them, most of the yeast that we work with are between 4 microns to 8 microns, uh, even up to 10. Um, but uh, it'll be difficult to count small cells uh, with the with the uh, T4. If you need more information on the Slomer X2, I think Sarah will be able to follow up with you with some more information. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have another question from 
Dan that says, although you have not looked at a staraf activity in brick stains, are any breweries, breweries currently working on this? Um, let me think. Mm, I think, so right now, let me, I'll give you guys a uh, um, update on the current brewing uh, industry for using solometer. Most of the customer we work with have been using the solometer for just the concentration of viability. It's not until in the recent, I would say, one and a half years to two years where we, um, we started collaborating with Avery uh, Brewery to study the vitality stain and how this works. Um, they, they probably have done testing on uh, many E strengths. I'm not particularly sure if it's on bread, uh, uh, on bread strength, but uh, this is a, a increasing topic. Uh, during the conference, many, many breweries ask us, you know, can you do uh, vitality reading? So two years ago, this was not asked. Maybe two and a half years ago, this was not asked. Now, a lot of breweries are starting to get into this mode. You know, I just, I don't, you know, I want to know more than just viability. So this is definitely something we, we are um, working on within internally, but also there's some, I think there's definitely other current customers that's uh, using the solometer for measuring vitality. I'm not sure because we're still in the process of trying to collect a lot of information. But once we find out, we'll definitely let you guys know. Great. That could potentially be a future webinar topic, maybe. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a, another question. How do you change parameters while working with various E strengths? Any standard parameters for reference? That's a very good question. Um, uh, so I'll go into a little bit about software uh, setup. In the, in the Solomon assay parameter setup, you can set up any parameters you want and lock them so that uh, when you're working with various E strengths, you can actually create a new assay for each E string, or you can create new cell types for each E string, and these can be locked. So if you have um, uh, if you have technicians, operators that uh, counting them uh, continuously, uh, you can have them use the same assay type. So everything, so we can remove the um, uh, the user. Well, almost all the user dependent. There's still a focusing part, but we we tend to, you know, do a big support on how to focus and make sure that everyone is focusing the same way. So this is very important. So we need to make sure everyone's trained properly. Um, but besides that, everything is locked. Uh, you can lock it, and you can always save the images. So that's what we recommend: save all the images. So even if you don't know how to count these, you can always send the images to us. And we have a very nice tech support, uh, Benjamin. He will be able to help you set up parameters to count those E's. And uh, if you need to do something more advanced, like the chain for me, we can also do uh, online training, or we can have on-site training to do those type of samples. And the uh, uh, standard parameters are probably just our default default asset. We can you can just build from there, and then change different sizing parameters to make sure it's counting. It takes it. It's a very simple process, but as a user, you basically play around with the parameters to make sure it's counting properly. And then once you're set, then you're done for for that string, and you can always use the same thing. Absolutely. Uh, and Leo brought up a great quest, uh, a great point there in his last response. Uh, we do have a dedicated um, tech support department, as as Leo had mentioned. Um, our Tech support is always available uh, once you have a solometer or you're working with solometer or evaluating solometer to help you set up new assays, new parameters, and really optimize those depending on the type of yeast you're working, the stage of the yeast fermentation that you're in, uh, or if you're looking to get something new out of it. Um, we never leave you hanging in that aspect. Um, ben can work with you over the phone. He can also set up a, a WebEx session so we can actually see your screen and help optimize that for you. And we do have dedicated field application scientists throughout the country uh, who can come into your, your brewery lab and do an on-site demo using your yeast. And they're also there to assist you uh, on-site uh, with any additional assistance that you may need. The other thing that Leo had mentioned, and this is certainly something that we can send out to you if you're interested, 
is we do have a number of breweries currently using our system to have agreed to be reference labs. Uh, so maybe it's possible that you know somebody or another brewery currently using one of our instruments that you can speak to if you do not. Uh, again, please reach out to Leo or myself and we'd be happy to put you in touch with any of the contacts at our, our reference labs that we had mentioned earlier in the presentation, such as at Avery and Dogfish Head uh, and others that's similar to those. Unless we have any other questions, I think we've gotten through them all. I think we're going to go ahead and end the presentation for today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this has been recorded. Uh, so shortly after uh, we end this today, the recording will be available through the same link that you went to join the webinar today. Uh, please feel free to come back and review it. Again, if you're looking for additional information, uh, you can go to our website, uh, nextworm.com. We have a great page on this longer X2. From here, you can see the different features and benefits. You can watch some videos. Uh, you can request uh, a free one-week in-lab evaluation of the instrument. You can send a, a question to one of our technical specialists. I request a demo or a quote. You can also look at the spec sheet. Uh, there's a lot of really great resources available here for you uh, to review if you're looking for some more additional information. And again, please feel free to reach out to us should you have any additional questions uh, after the webinar today. Uh, once again, we thank you all for joining, and uh, have a great day. Thanks, guys.